In this presentation, we will study mass action law in semiconductors. But before that, you need to write down these properties of silicon and germanium at 300 Kelvin, that is the room temperature. On the left hand side, you can see the properties, and corresponding to these properties, I have written the values for silicon and germanium. Like energy gap, we have 1.1 electron volt for silicon and 0.7 electron volt for germanium this is in electron or volts electron mobility and hole mobility a very important concept in semiconductor physics that we will discuss in the next presentation but right now you need to write down the values for silicon and germanium the electron mobility is measured in meter square per volt seconds and also the hole mobility is measured in meter square volt second the intrinsic carrier density that is n i the intrinsic resistivity and finally the density this is the normal density in gram per meter cube remember this is in gram per meter cube not kilogram per meter cube write down this properties at some point so that you may use it while solving the numericals now you have a better understanding of intrinsic and extrinsic semiconductors we discussed it in the last two presentations and you know that intrinsic semiconductor is the pure semiconductor in which we do not add any impurity atoms whether pentavalent or trivalent whereas in case of extrinsic semiconductors we convert the intrinsic semiconductor to the semiconductor in which we have excess of holes or excess of electrons we will have excess holes when we add the trivalent impurity and we will have excess electrons when we add pentavalent impurities you already know these things now in case of intrinsic semiconductor at any temperature the number of electron and the number of holes are always same this is a very very important point the number of electrons are same as the number of holes in case of intrinsic semiconductors okay this is very important point and it is true because when you create one hole you also create one free electron in the same way when you create n number of holes you are going to create n number of free electrons let's see how let us consider a covalent bond first these are the two atoms and there is a covalent bond between them the two electrons are there in the covalent bond and uh, let us say I want to knock out this electron out of this covalent bond so I will give some energy to this electron and uh, after this this electron will be available outside this covalent bond moving freely in the lattice and contributing to the conduction when this electron leaves this covalent bond we have hole at this point we have a hole so I have created one hole and also I have one free electron so the number of hole is same as the number of electron in case of intrinsic semiconductor this is very simple thing to understand if I represent the concentration of electron by n and concentration of hole by P I am representing the concentration of hole by P not by H because in the last presentation I explained you the movement of hole is same as the movement of positive charge with a charge equal to electron and mass greater than the electron and in case of intrinsic semiconductor they are same the concentration of electron and the concentration of hole is same and uh, I'm going to represent them collectively as N I where I stands for the intrinsic semiconductor and we call this N I intrinsic carrier density you can see here intrinsic carrier density and I 1.5 into 10 to the power 16 for silicon and 2.4 into 10 to the power 19 for germanium I hope this is clear to you and uh, what happen when we introduce the impurity atom the pentavalent impurity or trivalent impurity this thing this relation is not going to be the same 
because when you introduce trivalent impurity you have excess of holes in the lattice and hence the number of holes is greater as compared to the number of electrons and the same way when you introduce the pentavalent impurity you have more electrons as compared to the number of holes the relation between the electron concentration and the hole concentration is given by a very fundamental law in semiconductor physics that we call as mass action law. We will start with the statement, we will see what it says, then we will move to the mathematical model and finally we will prove it. Under the thermal equilibrium, the product of the free electron concentration, the product of the free electron concentration and the free hole concentration is constant and that constant is equal to the square of intrinsic carrier concentration. The product of free electron concentration and the free hole concentration is there. So N is the concentration of electrons and P is the concentration of holes and they are constant. They are constant and that constant is equal to the square of intrinsic carrier concentration and I the intrinsic carrier concentration. So this is the mass action law and we will prove it. In semiconductors because of thermal energy the electron will break the covalent bond and will participate in the conduction leaving the hole behind. So because of thermal energy there is generation of charge carriers. There is generation of charge carriers and I will represent this generation by capital G but after this electrons and holes are generated they again recombine they will be there for a fraction of time and they will recombine the electron will be combined with the hole and we have a neutral atom so there is recombination also and I will represent it by capital R under the thermal equilibrium the rate of generation is equal to the rate of recombination this is very important thing to know. Now if you think about the recombination then you will find that the recombination is directly proportional to the concentration of electrons and the recombination is directly proportional to the concentration of holes because if there are more number of electrons then definitely the recombination will increase and if there are more holes then also recombination will increase. You can consider a billiard table for understanding this concept if you have more holes okay these pockets I'm considering as holes and you have a limited number of balls if you strike the chances of these balls going in the hole will increase if you have 10 holes instead of 6 then chances of this ball going in the pocket will increase in the same way if you have 6 pockets but 20 balls or 10 balls then also the chances of ball going to the pocket will increase. So the recombination is directly proportional to the concentration of electrons and directly proportional to the concentration of holes. I can write it as R is directly proportional to the N P and if I remove this proportional sign we have a small r n P where R is the proportionality constant okay and in case of intrinsic semiconductors the generation is equal to a small r n i square and if you dope this intrinsic semiconductor then also the generation is not affected the most important thing in this lecture is this statement if you dope the intrinsic semiconductor the generation is not going to be affected the generation will be same so i can write g equal to r from here g is equal to r n i square and r is equal to small r n p so we have n i square equals to n p this is the mass action law you have to remember this formula we are going to use it in the next presentation and we will try to solve one numerical also so this is all for this presentation